voice effects, Mocha Pro has been the industry's trusted tool for planner checking for over 20 years. We are excited to announce that Vegas Pro now comes with free, built-in Mocha Vegas effect. Say goodbye to the old interior's point tracking workflow. With Mocha Vegas, you'll experience a whole new level of ease and efficiency. I'm Elizabeth Postel from Boris Effects, and I'll be guiding you through the process of learning Mocha Vegas. In this quick starter video, we'll cover the most important aspects to get you up and running. Without further ado, let's start the journey! Here we have a Vegas Pro project with a sample clip on our timeline. To apply the Mocha effect, head over to the Video Effects window and search for Mocha Vegas. Drag it over your clip to apply it, just as you would with any other effect. The Video Event Effects window will pop up, and from here, click on Launch Mocha. The first time you launch Mocha, you'll get a welcome screen with links to some additional training resources. We highly recommend checking those later, but for now, click Start. Don't be overwhelmed by the number of new buttons that you have to learn. This workspace contains the most essential tools. That's why it's literally called Essentials. As you become more experienced with Mocha, you may want to switch it to a more advanced workspace, such as Classic. But for now, we'll stick with the Essentials. Let's take a quick tour. The largest and the most obvious section is the Viewer, where most of the work will take place. Then at the top, we have our Toolbar. On the left, we have our Layers, Layers Properties and Tracking Controls. And at the bottom, there are the Timeline and Transport Controls. To navigate, use the mouse scroll wheel to zoom in and zoom out, and click and hold the middle mouse button to pan around. For today's task, we need to track this phone screen and add some insert there. Now, before we even start tracking and drawing any shapes, it's a good habit to just play and analyze the footage with our eyes. This will help us notice and avoid potential problems we may encounter later. Although this is a fairly typical shot, I see a few things we should consider to achieve a good track. The first and the most obvious issue is the finger occlusion. It covers the part of the screen and moves independently, not in the same direction as the phone. If we don't exclude it, it can affect our track in a bad way. The other thing is screen reflection. Shadows and reflections are often the main culprits behind inaccurate tracking. Although our brains can easily ignore them, we would need to explicitly tell Mocha to avoid these areas. All right. Keeping that in mind, let's deal with it one by one and create our first shape. Go to the toolbar and select the Xplane tool. This is the tool you will use the most often in Mocha. Alternatively, you can also start with the rectangle or circle mask tool. There is also an option to draw shapes with Bezier splines if you're a fan of those, but in general, the Xplane tool should be your go-to tool. With the tool selected, left-click to start drawing and create the spline around the object that you want to track. Continue to left-click each time you want to add a point. Don't be afraid to include some of the background in your shape. The common mistake that beginners make is trying to be very precise by drawing a shape that touches the edges of the trackable object. And that is not the best approach. Instead, including a small portion of the background is good, as it would help Mocha to define the edges of the plane. Just don't go too extreme with it. If the shape is too large and contains numerous non-coplanar surfaces, it is either not good and will confuse Mocha. When you're done drawing, right-click and close the spline. You will then be automatically switched back to the regular pick tool. You can adjust the tension of these points by pulling on the handles. You can do that one by one or right-click on a handle to select and adjust them all at once. Congrats! You've made your first shape in Mocha. Now, how would we handle this reflection? As we said before, we need to tell Mocha to ignore this area. So let's see how we can do that. Head over to the toolbar, then click and hold on the Xplane tool again. This will bring up the drop-down menu with a few more options. From here, I can select the Add Xplane tool. This is the one with the little plus sign in the corner. Now I can draw another spline inside my main one, and by doing that, I'm literally making a hole in my layer and telling Mocha what areas to ignore. 
Notice that with Addix Spline tool, the new spline was created not on a new layer, but instead on a layer we have selected. If you want to check whether everything was drawn correctly and see what exact areas would be tracked, you can navigate to the view, mats, and enable the mats visibility. See this white overlay? This shows what Mocha would look for. Anything in the white mat area will be tracked. Anything outside the mat area will be ignored. Using the Add Explained tool, we created a second shape on the same layer that cuts this hole in the center, which is exactly what we wanted. Now the reflections should not be a problem for us. Finally, we have to do something about that finger. We need to create another shape and mask it out. I will do this with a shape on a separate layer, so make sure that you switch back to the regular x plane tool. Now we can create a rough shape around the finger. Again, I'm not trying to be super precise here. For now, we just want a bigger mat to make it easier to track. We will refine it later. Pay attention that every time we create a new layer, it appears on the top of the layer list. Layer order is very important. Layers higher in the stack will work as an exclusion mask for the layers below. To make it more clear, let's rename the layers accordingly. I double click on a layer and call the top one finger track mat and the bottom one screen track. So the finger layer we have made is on the top of the screen layer and will work as an exclusion mat. Now we have the two layers we need, we are ready for the tracking stage. Below the Layers panel, we have the Track Motion options. Here is where we select the type of motion that we want to track. We have options for Translation, which is basically just a position movement, or also include Scale, Rotation, Skew, and Perspective. Each motion type relies on the previous one, so when we track with Perspective, the other motion types will also be selected. These parameters should be set for each layer individually. For example, the phone screen moves along all axes, so I would also enable perspective tracking to get the best possible result. As for the finger layer, we just want the mask to follow the finger movement. We don't really care about the best possible track data, so I can leave it as it is. That means translation, scale, rotation, and the skew. To start tracking, use these buttons. You can track forward or backward from any point in the timeline, I would do it from the middle, and first I would track backwards. When the finger leaves the frame, I don't have to keep tracking this layer. I can trim the layer by going into the layer properties and clicking on these buttons. While my playhead is on the first frame where I want my mask to appear, I click here to set my endpoint. The same goes for the ending. I would go back to the frame where I started the track, and now I track forward until the finger leaves the screen area. Then I can set my out point in the layer properties. Notice that the timeline turned from red to blue. This means that these frames now contain the track data. Perfect! Now I can just keep tracking only the screen. So I do that till the end of the shot, and then for the beginning. The screen track went smoothly and ends up looking pretty good. Or is it? This is the most vital concept that you need to understand while working with Mocha. Although the shape may look perfect, it does not necessarily mean that you have the best possible track data. The spline simply defines your search area and does not represent the accuracy of your track. What really shows how good or bad your track is, is the surface. To enable it, click on this blue icon in the toolbar or the one below the track motion options. The surface defines where the insert will be placed after you export the data to your host. I would align it accordingly to my screen. Now if I play back, you can see that the surface is rock solid in place. This means we have a good tracking data. Another way to visually check the track 
is to turn on the grid tool. This is especially useful for detecting any jitter when tracking small areas. Alternatively, you can use one of the built-in insert clips available in the layer properties. Now that we are done with our main screen track, the last thing we need to do is to get a nice accurate mask for the finger, which we'll use later for the composite. I would disable the visibility for the finger track matte layer to have a slightly clearer view. Then I select the x tool again and start drawing a new mask. This time, I'm going to draw my mask a lot tighter. It's better to create a shape with as few points as possible. This is because the fewer points we have, the easier it would be to refine the shape. As we did before, let's rename this layer to Finger Mask. Now, instead of tracking our finger again, we can just utilize the data that we already have. There is no point in doing the same thing twice. So, having my finger layer selected, we can use Link to Track feature and link this layer to the Finger Track Matte layer that already has the track data. You can see that the timeline for this layer also turned blue. And if I play back, the new tighter mask is now also following the finger. Link to Track is a technique that you'll often use in Mocha as it significantly optimizes the rotoscoping process. Most of the work is done by the tracking. We only need to refine the mask for a few frames. The best way to do this is to find the frame where the mask is most misaligned and adjust it there. The keyframes would be created automatically, and everything in between would be smoothly interpolated by Mocha. Then go in between and refine the mask as needed. Repeat the process until you're satisfied with how your mask looks. At the end of the day, you should have a shape that looks something like this. We also have the pinky finger that covers the screen for just a bit, so I would also want to mask that one. This time, I would start with the elliptical mask. Looks fine. This finger mostly moves in the same way as the screen, so instead of tracking, I can use Link to Track again and link this mask to the screen track layer. Only a few minimal adjustments would be required. And here's what we have so far. Hold on, we're almost there. We've done all of the work we need to do in Mocha, and we're finally ready to export the data to Vegas and assemble our comp. Close Mocha and don't miss to hit save. Back in the Vegas interface, you should still have this Event Effects window open. But let's actually close it for a sec. Before we export the data, we need to have something where to apply to. Right-click on a timeline and add a new track. Now I would drag an image onto the second track and place it over my main clip, making sure it is the same length as my footage. Perfect. Now let's go back into the Mocha parameters. Just click on the Effects icon on your clip and the Video Event Effects window should pop up. Expand the Tracking Data Parameters menu and click on Create Track Data button. The new dialog appears, allowing you to select the layer you want to generate tracking data for. In this case, we are interested in the screen track. Set the gear icon on the desired layer and click OK. This will populate the fields in the effect with the keyframe data. Now we have the data generated we just need to tell Vegas how we want to apply it. Click Apply Export. This will cause the Vegas Motion Tracking dialog to appear. Click the bottom right arrow in the Motion Tracking dialog, and from here, you can choose available clips to apply the track data to. Select the phone screen insert clip from the dropdown and choose Vegas Picture in Picture. Voila, the data has been applied. Now you can close both the Video Event Effects window and Motion Tracking dialog, we don't need that anymore. But here we have a problem. Our image has been stretched in a weird way. This is because the resolution of the insert does not match the resolution of our footage. 
and Vegas picture-in-picture effect expects it to be the same. Fortunately, this is very easy to fix. Go to the pan and crop parameters of your insert and just change the following settings. Maintain aspect ratio should be set to no, and the same goes for the stretch to fill frame. You should then see the screen image fill the phone normally. But now the insert is covering the finger, so we need to cut it out. Create another track on a timeline and place a copy of our footage on the top. Now it looks a bit like a sandwich. Open the video effects window for the top clip and in the mocha parameters expand the matte menu. Click on visible layers button. In this dialog, make sure that you set this eye icon only for the layers that you want to create masks for. So I leave it only for the finger layers. Now close this dialog and enable the apply matte checkbox. And here we have our fingers back. For a better composite, I can feather this right in the plugin. The feathering could be applied to all visible masks. Value somewhere around 3 works for me. The other way around would be not using the mocha mats, but instead create a native Vegas masks. So I would disable the apply mat checkbox and click on create masks. Bear in mind, no more than 5 masks could be exported to Vegas but this is fine for us for now. The Bezier masking effect would appear in the effect chain right after Mocha. We only need to adjust the feathering again. So I click on a Bezier effect and open the parameters for mask 1. This time, the feathering for mask should be set individually. Notice that the Vegas has a different value sensitivity, so I would set the feathering to 0.3 value. And the same goes for the second finger, that is mask 2. And that's it! Your first composite in Vegas is done! You can leave it as it is or play around with the composite in blending modes and opacity of the screen track to fine-tune the composite to your liking. Alright, we've talked about how to apply mocha and create the first shapes, covered the basic track with occlusion and the way how to get the data back into Vegas. Don't be discouraged if you don't always get the perfect track on the first attempt. There is still so much to cover that couldn't fit in just one video. We'll be taking a look at some more examples in the next couple of videos. Stay tuned and keep learning!